Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Listen, glad to have you guys here on this Friday. <clears throat> Friday, the uh, 22nd of May, 2020. You know, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, picture this. A neighborhood out in suburbia, you know. And uh, this, this this old fella, you know, and him and his wife say he's George and Martha. You know, George and Martha. George is peeking out the curtain, you know. And he's looking out there and he's talking to Martha. And he says, he's out there again, Martha. And Martha says, who's out there? The stoner. No. He's on his bicycle again. And there he goes. He's puffing on one right now. Here he goes, going by our house, he says. Martha says, oh, is he? He, he says, yeah, that, he says to Martha, he says, that guy goes by 30 times a day. He's constantly puffing on something, you know, the stoner, you know, the stoner. Martha says, okay, let me see. And she comes running over. She looks out the window, too, and there he is. <clears throat> and George goes <coughs> coughing and coughing, and Martha's coughing, too. And George says, how, how are you feeling today, George, Martha says. She says, oh, I'm still sick. I still got that COVID, and it just won't go away. It's down in my lungs, and I don't know. I might have to go into the hospital. And Martha says, yes, I'm awful sick today, too. I still got the fever and everything. But that guy out there, he's on the bicycle, driving up and back and forth 10, 20 times a day. Doesn't he ever get sick? Wouldn't you think those stoners could should get sick, too? <laughs> George says, I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't catch it. I don't know. What's what's going on with that? Well, I'll tell you guys what might be going on with that. Uh, let's open up the charts right here, and let's take a look at, uh, at this article. And uh, it says, right here, it says, Specifically, the researchers at the University of Lethbridge suspect that certain anti-inflammatory high CBD cannabis extracts can help modulate the levels of receptors in the mouth, lungs, and intestinal cells, areas that are among the most vulnerable for coronavirus infection. Previous research has shown that some of these strains can modulate the activities of receptors known as the ACE2, which other researchers have shown might be critical it uh, might be a critical gateway for the virus so basically what the researchers here at the University of Lethbridge have found out is that certain anti-inflammatory high CBD cannabis extracts can modulate the levels of the receptors in the mouth lungs and intestinal cells thereby blocking the virus from getting into these receptor sites in other words keep you from catching the virus who knows maybe this works as good as this is hydro clucky core filler whatever the heck it's called or, or these other recipes resent resent resin resin fins or whatever they these other crazy drugs they got maybe this works just as good or maybe better maybe better but you know they don't want a stoner America. They, uh, you know, they come through with this blanket policy. And basically, it said everybody in, in, in the entire United States of America and Canada has to stay home. And they basically destroyed our entire economy now. We don't have an economy anymore. They destroyed it. Fauci and the others, you know. They destroyed it. And now we're going to have to, I mean... The ramifications of that are just absolutely off, out, out, off of this world, you know. But what they really needed to do is there's a certain percentage of the population that's vulnerable to this disease, most vulnerable to this disease. They didn't need to lock down the whole world. What they needed to do is they pay close attention to that percentage of the population that's vulnerable. But they didn't. It would have been a simpler thing as... A lot of these nursing homes are enclosed environments. What it basically means is it's a building and, and they got a door that leads in and out. And oftentimes they have a buzzer on those doors. And you have to enter in a number or whatever to get in and get out, you know. And 
the only things that really come in and out of the nursing homes are the employees. Nothing else gets in or out. The, the nursing home people, they don't let them out, you know. And so only the employees get in. What they, what they need to do is test those employees on a weekly basis or even a daily basis for COVID-19. Focus, they needed to focus their attention on those employees that are going in. Because the virus wouldn't have been able to get in if they'd focused their attention on those employees that were entering the nursing home. You know, and, and the thing is, is what they needed to do was also anybody who's vulnerable over, say, the age of 50, they should have said, hey, you know, you guys are the guys that need to, uh, need to be locked in your house, you know, and, and protect yourself from this. You know, and instead of shutting, just blanketly shutting the entire economy down, oh my goodness, the ramifications of what they've done now uh, is going to start to strike home. And there's never, this is unparalleled in history, uh, the depression that they've created. It even exceeds what happened in 1929. And what, what, what we're facing is something that, that is... Uh, that hasn't really been felt fully yet of what it's going to do, but in a few more months, it's going to start to, it's going to start to feel the impact of it, and it's going to be absolutely massive. And of course, in something like that, when you have millions of people out of work, uh, how would I put it, death by association or whatever? But it's like it'd be staggering the toll on human life it's going to actually take ultimately. Uh, if you look ahead in the future, maybe if you had a time machine went five years ahead in the future and look back at what's just going to happen in the next year or two with this depression that they've created, it's going to take human lives. There's no other way of putting it. It's going to take, and it's going to take a lot of human lives. People are going to die just because they, uh, maybe some people just can't get shelter. Because they're out on the street, you know, and it rains on them or whatever. And the police tell them you got to move or whatever. And then the next day they come down with pneumonia and they die, you know. And there's going to be case after case after case after case of that of this happening. And the toll on human life is going to be greater than the toll we're seeing that the virus is extracting ultimately in the end. You know how many people died from the, from, from the Great Depression? And not only that, the mental uh, stress that it puts on the people. So here we have this stoner going down the street, you know, on his bicycle, <laughs> pedaling away. He's healthy as a horse, you know, and he doesn't have a care in the world. He doesn't have the stress, you know, that that, that a lot of these other people are finding that's, that's come, becoming focused on them. And they don't know what to do. They don't see a way out. They're locked inside their house. They're peeking out through the curtains. And they're full of stress, and then they have the, they're going to catch, probably catch the coronavirus on top of that. You know, and, and they've created a, a situation in the world, you know, a totally bizarre situation. Anyway, let's move on and take a look at the markets today. 707, down three cents for silver today. Uh, now let's take a look at gold and see what it's doing. 1731 for gold it's up three dollars and seventy cents today uh let's take a look now at uh, cryptocurrencies 255 billion dollars 66.2 percent bitcoin dominance and bitcoin price is at 9200 bucks today so uh bitcoin had a little fall off but so did gold and silver and and now what's happened is is they've all three have stabilized at this point the price is stabilized on all three let's take a look at the Dow Jones it's down uh, today 149 points 24,329 on the day for the Dow Jones now let's take a look at crude oil crude oil is thirty two dollars and seventy seven cents it's down a dollar fifteen on the day or three point three nine percent and now let's check out U.S. Treasuries. And we're seeing fallen yields on the longer end of the yield curve here. We're looking at 0.66 on the U.S. 10 years, down one and a half basis points. And the U.S. 30 years, 1.37, and it's down 2.2 basis points today so far. Now let's take a look at the U.S. Dollar Index. 
Dollar index is 99.83 on the U.S. dollar index today. 99.82. Uh, what we're heading toward is, is right now we have a tug of war between inflation and deflation in the system. And some prices are inflating, some prices are deflating. Uh, it's such a mess out there, and the Fed's pumping money out one side, and we see the job, people don't have jobs, they're not spending money on the other side. So one side's deflating, one side's inflating, and it's a tug of war between the two, and it's all up to the central banks now, which way this whole thing goes, which direction it goes. Now, I see the central banks right now as kind of lagging behind a little bit. That's what I see happening. Uh, and they're not reactive. They wait until after a situation happens and then they react, you know. Uh, and so it's very likely that now at this point the stock market and stuff could react to the crisis that we're facing. Uh, and we could have the market go down, but, you know, the, the Fed will react if it goes down a certain percentage. Uh, I believe that percentage to be around 18,000 when the Fed will come in with a big reaction. Uh, and believe me, in this kind of a crisis, we could get down to, eight, well, you saw how quick it fell down before, and they propped it up when it hit 18,000. That's why I say I believe that they have, a, they've put a, they've put a floor under it. Uh, if they see it go down to 18,000 or below, that they'll step in. And you'll see new monetary policies, even more uh, accommodative than what they've already done, you know. In other words, they'll do more. Anyway, listen, guys. Thank you guys for listening to my show. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.